Sports Nation, I feel the need for speed. Is BYU football returning to a go-fast, go-hard offense? I go one-on-one with running back Tyson Williams. He discusses his health in the new-look offense. Plus how and why the BYU receivers will be better with basically the same crew. Let's go! This is BYU Sports Nation. Brought to you by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now from Studio B... Here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, Wednesday, August 7th, wherever and however. You are connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who once claimed to have dunked a volleyball, Jerem Jordan. That's as good as it got. Uh, I'm no Yoli Childs, that's for sure. Um, I'm not sure when this picture was taken or this series of pictures uh, in a video because that's what a video is. It's moving pictures. Uh, Yoli Childs can touch very high, and uh, BYU Basketball put this out yesterday. He's touching something like 12 feet or something because the top of the backboard is 13 feet. He looks like he's touching like 12 feet. Is that as high as Gavin Baxter? He, he may be 12'6". It's probably close, if not higher, than Gavin Baxter. Both of them jumping out of the yeah, gym right now. Both bouncy, which is good. I like dunks. I like dunks and threes. Yes. That's what I like. That is the current state of basketball and fandom for basketball. Dunks and threes, right? This morning I passed up potential contact at the rim where the fouls don't even count for just an open jumper that I rattled home. Business decision. For the win. I was like, I'm just going to shoot this 10-footer. It's wide open. <laughs> I would rather be Clay Thompson and C.J. McCollum than I would the guy crashing at the rim. There's no refs. These guys are these guys are gonna foul me with the game on the line. No, I'm just gonna shoot this ten footer and down. Okay, it works. Business decision. Yeah. Also, according to what I see on social they know media, not to touch the face. According to what I see on social media, basketball is clearly about dunks, posterizing people, block shots, and if you have good enough ball handling skills to break somebody's ankles. That that's what it's become, right? Yeah, Steph, this happened to Steph Curry. It happens to the best of us. This is this is. What I did not just is. compare myself to Steph Curry. That was an accident. I want to apologize. For <laughs> redacted from the statement. Here's today's show lineup. No redacting necessary. Tyson Williams. How does he fit into the BYU running backs group? In his own words, Jerem Jordan one on one with the transfer from South Carolina. Plus, we go between the lines. It's Christmas in the summer as the big boys gear up. Technically, it was in July, right? Because they received their gear on the final day of July. But we'll just call it Christmas in the summer. Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Hello, day seven of BYU football training camp. Smile big, everyone. It's also team photo day. Head coach Kalani Satake says we'll know more about this year's team after today's practice. Uh, I think, you know, when we get to Wednesday, there'll be uh, the seven practices. I'll be able to give you more um, info but by then. Media availability a little bit earlier than we've had normally. 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, as well as a Facebook Live from BYU TV Sports to follow. BYU Women's Soccer is five out of the United Soccer Coaches Top 25 poll. Brigham returns nine starters, including Herman Trophy, watchlist candidates Elise Flake, and Michaela Coulihan. That's like the Heisman Trophy. The season begins August 22nd in Alabama. Cougar opponents Texas A&M and Santa Clara ranked 12th and 13th. So Santa Clara, the team to beat early on, apparently, even though BYU's won, what, four of the last five or something? And Texas A&M coming to Provo this year. That's going to be a huge game. Very nice. Love it. Former BYU baseball shortstop Daniel Schneeman won for three with a double and a run scored in a 5-4 to four Lake County captain's win over the Dayton Dragons. Schneeman hitting 295 in single-A ball, second highest on his team among qualified players. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Hey, speed it up. BYU football returning to an ideology of go fast, go hard, potentially. Here's offensive line coach Eric Mateos on that very topic. You know, we might not, we're not going to be playing 65 play games. Our goal is to be playing 85, 90, 95 play games on offense. And when you do that, it's nice to get a 20 play spell. Um, at a position or two. So that's the plan. Jerem, how do you feel about the idea of BYU returning to a form of go fast, go hard? I like it with an asterisk. It's not enough to just go fast, uh, which brings me to this. The last five seasons, according to Sports Source Analytics, 
The top 15 teams in plays per minute won 48% of their games. Going fast doesn't mean you're good. The previous five years, that number was 61%. Defensives have adapted. However, I do think this caters to the strengths of the BYU personnel, which I think you'd be a fool to avoid, right? I think in 2016, Ty Detmer was trying to establish something with BYU, uh, but I, I feel like he should have looked at, I have Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams. Why don't I use them in the best way possible? And BYU struggled at times offensively, yet still went 9-4, and four, which makes me think if they had gone full Taysom Jamal strengths, they would have gone 11-2 and two or something, right? I, I think that Zach Wilson can run an offense that is fast. I think Jaron Hall can as well. Spread the field, find the running back out of the backfield. The pass sets up the run sometimes. That's been BYU historically when they've been good. And the most important attribute of a, a great offense is explosiveness, in my opinion. I, I know that Greg Rubel feels strongly about that too. If you can be explosive, you're in business. Yards per attempt last year, 8.7 for Zach Wilson. Okay. That's a good number. The greatest seasons in BYU quarterback history had guys going 9-plus. And that leads me to this. There have only been two seasons in Independence where BYU was top 50 in points per possession and top 60 in yards per play, 14 and 15. That's it. And it was Robert and I. It was your 2 and 3 of Go Fast, Go Hard. You would bring up the word asterisk on the 12-year anniversary of Barry Bonds breaking Hank Aaron's all-time home run record. Yeah, his career has an asterisk. <laughs> of course. You like it with an asterisk. I like it. I want BYU to go faster. I just don't want BYU to feel like they need to go too fast because it is a double-edged sword. Yes, if you go faster, you're not automatically better, right. as you pointed out. Right. Like, it, there is no – everybody would be going fast if that meant you were automatically better, right? It's not clear like that. Mix up the tempos. Have an offensive coordinator and a quarterback in sync to know that, hey, we got something going right now with a sped-up offense. Or I kind of like that we're wearing this team down on, with the run game. Let's uh, tone it back a little bit. Just have the flexibility to adjust to the defense and have a comfortable relationship with your offensive coordinator and your quarterback to be like, let's mix up tempos. So if that means BYU runs more plays, great. And it's 75 or 78 or 80. I don't care. Just – Feel comfortable enough in the offense to know that sometimes it's going to be better when you go fast, and sometimes it's going to be okay if you ramp it back and kind of just ground and pound. I mean, it burned BYU when it was only fast when they first introduced this go fast, go hard, because they lost to Virginia, lost to Virginia. for crying out loud. Yeah. And they ran a bunch of plays, but defense gets tired really fast if you're not converting first down. So, like, the idea is, no, no, we're, we're going to get their defense tired because we're going to not let them make substitutions. What happens if you go three and out with go fast, go hard? You're done. Well, plus, you're running the same amount of plays as the defense. Like, you get tired too, right? It's that they're not ready for that set and that they can't sub. If, you, if the offense doesn't sub, the defense can't sub. Mix up tempos. Read the game, assess what's happening, and I think that's the most effective approach. Topic two, yesterday on Twitter, David Nixon tweeted the following. Prediction, this O-line will produce a 1,000-yard rusher this season in Williams or Katoa. Got some big boys up front leading the way. Do you agree? No, and here's our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Exactly two BYU Cougars have rushed for 1,000-plus yards in independence. They both played on majority of the same teams, Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams. Notably in that go fast, go hard offense, right? Okay. And NFL backfield got it done. This is not the year for BYU to feature a 1,000 yard back. We've learned from Jeff Grimes that it's going to be a running back by committee, not out of necessity, but because they want to. So why would this all of a sudden produce a running back that runs for 1,000 yards? If someone gets hurt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, maybe, you, don't, maybe, you don't want it. Maybe right, there's but. a feature back because because of injuries. Yeah. But even then, with the committee approach at the beginning of the season, this is going to be hard. It's BYU. There are committees. Next year is the year, Jerem, because you will have oh. Lopini Katoa as the incumbent feature back. Tyson Williams graduated. Emmanuel Supa graduated. So Lopini is now just the guy. And BYU brings back essentially the same offensive line. Next year is the year for BYU to have a 1,000-yard rusher. It's not this year. It ain't happening because it will require 200 carries from somebody. That's, that's, I, I looked this morning at every 1,000-yard rushing year, right? 14 running backs have done it. Not different guys. Some were the same, right? Harvey Ewing and Jamal Williams multiple times. Jamal Willis, one by a quarterback, Taysom Hill. 
The average thousand yard season uh, is 220 carries, 1200 yards, five and a half carry. Okay. The fewest carries in a season ever for a thousand was 196. So it takes 200 carries. In the last five seasons, BYU's only given one guy 200 carries. It was Jamal Williams in 2016. I just don't think that amount of volume, and uh, that's assuming you get five yards carry, by the way, 200, five, 1,000. I don't think anybody's getting 200 carries on this team. I, th- I think you're going to have maybe 100-plus from both Tyson Williams and Lopini Katoa, assuming both are healthy all year, and that would be great. Oh, and BYU wants to throw more. Yeah, if BYU... <laughs> Well, if BYU is going to reel off more plays, there will certainly be more yards to be had. Does that mean a guy will get 1,000 yards? I just think it will be split among Cato and Williams at this point. Hopefully both are healthy. Hopefully both combine for 650-plus, right? And it's like, okay, that was a good duo. I like the idea of 1,000 total yards for a BYU running back. Let's say they have... 300 yards receiving and 700 yards rushing, and it's a 1,000 yards combined. Great. Yeah. yeah. Great. That, Do that's that. the Christian McCaffrey approach, Yes, right? absolutely. So I'm okay with BYU going the combined route, and I think that's way more likely given the setup of the offense. Yeah, they, it, there's not an established guy that's going this season as the guy. Like if Jamal Williams is on this team, you go, yeah, Jamal's going to be the 1,000-yard guy, no it, doubt. It's going to be hard for this offense with a committee approach to have a guy – Rush the ball at least 200 times at a five-yard average for 1,000 right. yards. It's a committee approach right now. We'll see when we go we'll into see the season what it becomes. how it goes. What if one is either inept or injured, right? You don't want that. Hopefully both are good because I think against a schedule like this, where you play four power fives to start, three or four in the road in the next, November is whatever, you need quality all around. On to topic three, speaking of committee approach, the pass catchers and the playmakers in that regard are expected to do more for BYU football this season. Just ask the head ball coach. We just have to find ways to get them the ball, right? So uh, I, I look at all the receivers that have played here. It's, it's not like the talent here is, um, is worse or anything. It's just uh, find ways to get them the ball. Kalani Satake on record. Jerem, why will the receivers be better if they're the same crew? Well, if the quarterback's better and the O-line's better and the scheme's better, uh, better ingredients, better receivers, Papa John's, right? It's, Logic it's like, 101. Yes. I, I think that Tanner Mangum uh, tried but couldn't get the ball to these guys in the same way. 2017 was an abomination across the board, right? But even the first six games last year, BYU was just not explosive. BYU was not finding people down the field. Tanner Mangum was not throwing people open. Zach Wilson's going to throw people open. He's also going to throw some picks, and you're going to scratch your head, and Jeff Grimes is going to get upset because he doesn't want to turn the ball over. But if you want to be explosive and you want to run more plays, guess what? There's a little bit of risk involved there. You're going to invest in a different way, right? There's, you're going to lose some money sometimes. But guess what? When you cash in, it's going to be awesome. Better quarterback makes for better receivers. We had a case study of this late last season. Notably, Dylan Colley. Oh. Yes, he was absent like all year. And then BYU makes a quarterback shift, and then they change the scheme, mm-hmm. and Dylan Colley emerges to what we thought he would be all season. Underused. Matt Bushman, underused. Oh, Matt it, Bushman emerged when we started to see BYU throw the ball more. You don't block as well. I, that's fine. The dude is a pass catcher. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think BYU has guys that can do it. I think they've got the quarterback that can get them the rock. Hopefully the O-line can protect at the level they need to. Uh, And then in these first four, now we're talking. The first three quarters against Utah. Boom, BYU's moving it down the field. Zach Wilson's chucking it. Neil Powell, boom, in the end zone. Matt Bushman across the middle. One-handers. Running the ball well enough. Uh BYU was averaging like four yards carry. It wasn't great. The the potato bowl second. BYU's down at halftime of the potato bowl to Western Michigan. Are you kidding me? Zach Wilson comes out. Jeff Grimes makes an adjustment. Kalani's talking to the staff. Great adjustment. Credit them for that, right? 18 for 18, 42 points in the second half. BYU ain't playing Western Michigan in the first four, but it gave you a, a taste of what a more up-tempo, pass-heavy offense could look like for BYU with Zach F. Wilson. You saw this. A case study was revealed mm-hmm. with multiple receivers. Dylan Colley, Matt Bushman. Riley Burt ran for over 100 yards. Like, it opened up the run, too. It can work, people. It can work. Also, with our phone conversation this morning, I feel like BYU fans missed out on one of your gems, Jerem, with the wide receiver committee. You 
saying the names of several receivers to <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. I did, yeah, <laughs> I did. You know he fo and Pau and Romney and Shumway. Yeah, and then I think Bushman would be yeah. Rudolph. Yeah, like you know him, he's the best one. Unique, red hair. He thinks it's blonde. I think. Right? Did we have that discussion? Is that Rory Link? Oh, that's Rory Link. Okay, sorry, wrong, we, wrong we redhead. It strawberry blonde. Yeah, wrong redhead. My bad. Okay, we've we've seen a case study. Yeah. I appreciate we'll the make things a video you bring later. to the phone conversations we have every morning. Part of the brainstorm is a raw <laughs> idea, pretty undeveloped. Uh, we're going to work with uh, probably Kurt Bester to develop that later. So yeah. We've talked about the speed of the offense, the running backs. There's going to be a 1,000-yard rusher, and now the core of receivers. Our question of the day, why is the BYU offense running more plays per game a good or bad idea? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. At the casual hippie, he's just casual. On Twitter, it's a good thing. BYU has tended to perform better in a slightly higher tempo and higher paced offense. It helps minimize any talent skill gaps by shifting the focus to execution. I think maybe BYU saw, okay, as our starter, Tanner Mangum is better doing this, right? Or something. I I thought he did well in 2015, but perhaps... More up tempo would have been better for Tanner Mangum. Maybe not. Maybe there was a decision. Okay, based on your skill set, I think we'll be most effective here. That game plan works sometimes, right? It worked at Arizona. It uh, worked at Wisconsin. So it it's not a plug and play in all situations per se. There will be games where BYU is maybe like we got to shrink the clock in this game. Like against Washington, I'm not sure you want to reel off a gajillion plays against what is always a great defense. If you can milk it a little bit, go here or there, use tempo to offset. Uh, competitive disadvantages that time, then it then it works. Yes, you bring up Tanner Mangum. He was asked to be a game manager. Go back and listen to the fall camp and, interviews from last year. It was all about was ball that based control. on his skill set or what Jeff Grimes wanted? It was all about both. ball control. Yeah. Don't turn the ball over. We heard Jeff Grimes say, "Don't turn I, the ball over. I, Don't turn the ball that's over." That's an interesting mindset to me because that's like. In basketball, that would be like, hey, don't turn it over. It's like, well, how about we focus on making shots and moving the ball? As a, Can that be the fourth thing you tell me? And maybe it is for Jeff Grimes. It's different now for him. But it's like, different if now you're for the like, offense. If you're like, our number one focus is don't turn it over, it's like, shouldn't the focus be to score points? Isn't that the, the – maybe that is, and he's just saying it first, but it's actually fourth on the list when they talk. I don't know. Tanner Mangum was the guy because he was the game manager, and he was asked to be very conservative, and BYU wanted to hold on to the ball and out physical teams. Things have changed. Yeah, it's quarterback has changed. The mentality, the, the scheme, the it's all changed. The quarterback dictates everything you do, in my opinion. He, you don't try and wedge the quarterback into that. You say, what do you do well? Let's do that, right? Coming up, what kind of swag are we talking about on Equipment Day? Between the line, explores the deets. But first, Tyson Williams talks about the difference in the offenses he's played for in college football. What makes BYU unique? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Get the latest and greatest from BYU Fall Camp on Facebook.com slash BYU TV Sports with on-demand videos and recaps, including today, 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, live from BYU Photo Day. Speaking of live, we are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. The BYU running back situation currently behind Zach Wilson we believe is the number two storyline in fall camp. Who's going to be the guy that Zach Wilson is relying on? And now we're learning that it might just be, again, a committee approach with Lopini Katoa, Tyson Williams, and Emmanuel Isupa. Now, Tyson Williams, because he's the transfer from the SEC, has stolen a ton of this limelight. BYU fans want him to be great. Jerem Jordan wanted to speak with Tyson Williams, one-on-one BYU Sports Nation All Access from BYU Football Training Camp. All right, Tyson, uh, five practices in the books at BYU. How's it gone so far? It's been pretty good. Uh, Like I said, we just come out here every day, try to get better, and uh, it's been fun. You feel like you're getting better? I feel like we we are. I mean, today uh, it's kind of shaky, kind of in between, but um, the great thing about fall camp, we come out here tomorrow, so we'll just make up for it. Is the energy still as high today as it was in day one? That can be hard to keep, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But really good teams, you got to find a way to, I mean, even on practice 15 and, and so forth. So you got to be able to keep the energy and just maintain the focus and go out there and execute. 
This is nothing in terms of heat and practice compared to North Carolina and South Carolina, right? It's different. It's different. I think the, the, the hardest thing here was just my mouth is always dry. So, uh, I mean, it's hot in both places, but um, just getting adjusted to some of the dryness has been been, been uh, pretty hard. Chapstick? What do you use? Mm -mm, I just lick my lips. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll need the chapstick. Yeah, then I need the chapstick, and then I try to drink. I try to drink a lot of fluids as well, so um, just try to stay hydrated and you know try to do the best I can with it. At what point when you got to BYU did you get the beard card? Because that is a beautiful thing. That is the envy of most dudes on campus. Uh, I would assume pretty quickly because I had to kind of get everything done to uh, get cleared. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably say within the first week or so. And we were chatting. It's kind of it's kind of coming up on the chin strap right now. You got to yeah. trim that thing down. Yeah, it is. So I might I might just shave it off. You know, I might just shave it off and and just get you know get adjusted to how how everybody else is. So um, I don't know. It just depends. I definitely am gonna shave it down though because it's, it's all in my mouth. It's not it's not comfortable. Maybe do it right before the Utah game. Then they have no clue who you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm gonna just blend in like everybody else. Exactly. Like, yeah, who's that? So yeah. they won't even know. Exactly. This is a new offense. This is a new school. It's new everything. Yeah. Um, what, what's been the easiest and funnest thing to adjust to? The easiest and funnest thing was just, uh, I would say, just uh, being with the guys on the team and uh, just, you know, uh, hanging with those guys, getting to, getting to know them. Because I felt like, uh, I mean, most teams, uh, guys will be guys. And, uh, I mean, we all just kind of like to have fun. But, I mean, sometimes we just kind of like to strap it in and be serious about our business. So it's kind of been fun just learning about the guys and, you know, the different way of life that, you know, I, I, I didn't have growing up. So um, I think that was the biggest thing and most fun thing for me. Who have you connected with so far? Who are some of your teammates that you've hung out with the most? Uh, mostly it's, it's been just kind of like uh, Emmanuel and Micah. But uh, I say inside the building, I, I mean, I, I talk to everybody. So, I mean, uh, Mac. Uh, Bushman, Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, uh, Sione. Um, so, I mean, all the guys, Dax, I mean, all the guys that I, I mean, especially the guys who I work out with, um, I just always try to talk to them and, you know, just try to see how, they, how, how things are going in their life. How's your Polynesian pronunciation coming? I would think it's below average. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's probably below average. Um, yeah, some of those names are, are really difficult. Yeah. yeah, you'll be good by the end of the year, though. I hope so. I hope so. I'm gonna just pr keep practicing, and you know, hopefully, I'll be good. How does this offense compare to the ones you've run, where BYU is trying to reel off a few more plays this year than last year? Yeah. Um, so I think, um, I mean, North Carolina and South Carolina. South Carolina, we kind of did it towards the um, the end. We're trying to just go fast and um, just try to catch the defense off guard. So uh, I think that's always great. Um, anytime you can kind of line up and the defense defense is set. Um, it's a, it's a better, greater chance for explosive plays. How does this team, in terms of the makeup of some of the guys on the team, compare to maybe what you thought now that you're out here running around? Um, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. Um, as I say, I, I, when I got here, um, the guys were very welcoming. And, I mean, just day by day, the more that I've kind of, like, trained with them and got, getting to know them, um, they're great people inside and out. Who, who on the defense has your eye where you're like, okay, that guy's, that guy's going to stick me if I'm not who, careful? Who, who do you think? Who do you think? Maybe Devin Kafusi on the edge a little bit. He's a big dude. That's a, that's a good guess. But I, I, would, I would say Kyrus. I'm always looking for Kyrus. Of course, Kyrus. Between Kyrus. the tackles. Yeah, yeah, I'm always looking for him. And then even that was like, a whiff by me. Yeah. I want to admit that right now. <laughs> and because, um, like, some plays he was like, he'll be calling my name out, like, run over, <laughs> run over here, Tyson. So, yeah, you always got you always got to be uh, watching out for Kyrus, man. He shouldn't ID himself so easily, right? No, he shouldn't. But, I mean, as dominant as he is, I mean, I don't really think it matters, man. He, he'll, he'll find, a way, find a way to make a play. That guy would fit in just fine in the SEC, would he not? Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. So I think um, a lot of people were kind of like, uh, you know, SEC, SEC, I mean, it kind of is a big thing, big deal to people. But uh, for me, it's kind of like, I mean, SEC is not the only people that go to the NFL. So um, you have guys here who are very talented, um, who can, who, you know, who have dreams and uh, real aspirations of going to the next level. So, um, you know, I, I try not to look at it. I just try to blend in with the team and um, just go to work. How's your health? It's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's the fifth day of camp, so it's been pretty difficult. But um, just like I say, just staying in the treatment room, trying to take care of things, and you know, just trying to put my body in the best position. To, uh, you know, come out here every day and you know, be full speed. You wait all year to play. We're three and a half weeks away. What kind of emotions come to mind when you think about that? Um, just ready to step out there. Um, I just want to kind of see, you know, what the atmosphere because I don't really know what to expect. Cause this is my first BYU Utah game, but. 
I would I would expect to be some a very crazy atmosphere. And uh, you know, anytime you're in an atmosphere like that, it just it just elevates your game and it just gets you more pumped up to be uh, be ready to play. What sticks out about your fellow uh, running back mates right now? Who's who's playing really well? Who's showing stuff? All of them. Um, Emmanuel's look good. Uh, Lapenny's look good. Sione's look good. Tyler. Um, even the younger guys, Jackson, Allen, and uh, Morgan. I mean, I think everybody's just, you know, going out there, learning each and every day, getting better. Um, but, I mean, I think I think everybody's been looking good. How was Zach Wilson's birthday on Saturday? What did you guys do? We didn't do much for him. I know we sung we sung happy birthday to him uh, in the team meeting room, and uh, his parents brought donuts. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of all we did. He kind of hung out with the family and stuff like that. So, you definitely understand that. Okay. How old are you right now? 22. 22. Yeah. Grad transfer. How's how's the grad school coming along soon? Uh, I, I just had a meeting not too long ago, but uh, I mean classes haven't started yet. But luckily, luckily they haven't started yet. But uh, <laughs> I mean I look forward to it. Um, it's something I take pride in. Um, school is very important to me, so uh, I know I know I'll do fine. Maybe at some point in the uh, season you score a touchdown. Maybe some nod to grad school or something maybe a cat you throw the cap up or something no yeah i don't know i have to talk to my professor and see <laughs> see what he wants he might just want to point or something to him so yeah. uh, we'll i'll talk to him and see what okay. he wants and uh we'll make it happen okay tyson appreciate the time uh BYU sports nation karma to you and good luck thank you thank you let's go five tyson williams byu football running back ready to roll but just avoid kairos Hey, run over here, hey, Tyson. Hey, run over here, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, uh, that battle that's developing in camp. One time uh, in a turkey bowl, Wayne Latu was in there, former BYU running back. He is fast and thick. For some reason, they decided to play tackle. I catch the ball, and Wayne is sprinting at me. Like, he is going to destroy me. Uh-huh. I literally ran out of bounds, <laughs> and I think screamed like this. Ah! Another business decision. I had to. Listen, I got to be up here. I can't have Wayne Lockett yes. breaking my neck. Another Jeez. business decision. Listen, did Pick I have to ball, make that noise? Pull Probably up not. the jumper in the turkey bowl, run out of bounds when Wayne Lockett was chasing It was you. a completion, got the first down, <laughs> move the chains, right? Um, but Tyson Williams tweeted yesterday. Oh, I love at this. Juice Williams underscore. Done with the hype. Oh, done, done with, the hype. with the hype. Done with the hype. Does Let's mean, play ball. Yeah, and how many days? Countdown to the youths. 22 days. 22. Clyde Drexler. Danny Ainge. Yeah. Three weeks from tomorrow, we will be at Lavelle Edwards Stadium soaking in the game day atmosphere. <sighs> There's a lot for me to do. Before then. <laughs> <laughs> we did a walkthrough at the stadium. By the way, I saw yesterday at the stadium the, the new uh, walkways. walkways between a stance. Really nice. They're not going to put up a bunch of stuff. It's just for walking. Beautiful view uh, between there. It's going to be great. They added bathrooms on the uh, upper level. It's nice. And Cougar Canyon is going to be really cool. Uh, we're going to be out there showing you what's going on, counting down to kickoff. So, yeah, I'm super stoked. Yeah, exciting game day atmosphere. I drove past the stadium yesterday and felt that surge of excitement. Yeah, yeah, like Rudy. I know, like, it's Notre Dame. That's it's, weird. It's close. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Coming up, Rock passes to U, Utah Valley students. Fury Hoops, team of the decade, then left out of a poll. The emoji game is in the hole. But first, between the lines with Christmas in July, the big uglies get equipment so they can be big beauties. Lauren Frank and McLean has the details. This is BYU Sports Nation. You know Simon... Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We just perfected our rendition of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with Matt Bushman and the BYU receivers instead. But we have opted not to give it to you because we hope to get, that BYU gets into a Power 5 conference There's at some certain point. certain things right? we don't want to right? put out there. This is one of them. <laughs> Here are today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Day 7 of BYU football training camp goes down today. Smile big, everyone. It's also team photo day. Head coach Kalani Sitake believes he'll know more about this year's team after today's practice specifically. Uh, I think, you know, when we get to Wednesday, there'll be uh, the seven practices. I'll be able to give you more um, info by then. All right. Media availability at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, as well as a Facebook Live report from BYU TV Sports to follow. So what info is Kalani Sitake going to give us after today? I don't know. We'll find out. Is someone going to follow up in practice? You be the one. I'll be the one to follow up. Yeah, exactly. 
BYU Women's Soccer is five out of the United Soccer Coaches Top 25 poll. Brigham returns nine starters, including Herman Trophy watchlist candidates Elise Flake and Michaela Coulihan. Season begins August 22nd at Alabama. We want Bama! Cougar opponents Texas A&M and Santa Clara ranked 12th and 13th. Former BYU baseball shortstop Daniel Slim Schneeman won for three with a double on a run scored in a 5-4 Lake County Captains win over the Dayton Dragons. Schneeman hitting 295 in single A ball, second highest on his team among qualified players. It's time for us to experience and celebrate what was a Christmas in July. To kick off fall camp last week, the BYU football players got to pick, among other things, new cleats and gloves, plus all of that extra Nike swag. How do we get in on this deal? That's what I want to know. But what special equipment do the hogs up front and the trenches need? Lauren McLean followed a couple of offensive linemen as they celebrated their winter spectacular in July, receiving gifts. Let's go between the lines. BYU Sports Nation presents Between the Lines. We're with Brady Christensen and James Empey from the offensive line. And what's today, guys? Christmas Day. All right, we first got some uh, oh turf shoes. I actually uh, kind of golf in them. So you use these during all of fall camp. It's like your cleats are. Yeah, like walkthroughs or like when we're on the turf. We just got some uh, good casual Nikes. Oh, I'm not much sweet. of a runner, so casual for me. <laughs> we got oh, some uh, yep. nice sliders. We got a nice bucket hat here. Do you practice in that hat? <laughs> no way. <laughs> well, maybe I should put it like over my helmet, you know, because my nose does get sunburned. Got some pants. For me, capris, because usually they go like up to here. We got a bunch of uh, clothes, shirts, oh. like 10 shirts. I thought Zach was trying to steal your stuff. Hey, 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 easy, buddy. I know you want my stuff, but take it easy. <laughs> oh, so they do, they did throw in some navy. Another tee, long sleeve tee. I could use this as a nightgown. Another nice white, oh, look, like I'm wearing. Can't beat white shirt. <laughs> You can never have too many. You never have too many team. gear. <laughs> and supposedly white makes you look larger too. So for an offensive lineman, this is what we're talking about. Great for golfing once again. Brady rarely wears the stuff for actual football. He <laughs> wears most of it for golfing. So everyone gets the exact same stuff. Except for your cleats and your gloves. Okay. And I'm guessing that's next, right? That's cleats, next. gloves, next. We got them all on the table so you can kind of decide what you want beforehand. Which okay. cleats? do the O-line want of all these styles? These ones right here, these are a little bit beefier. They got a little bit more uh, support for the big guys. Who wears these? Uh, probably skill players. Nah, this looks like a like a Joe Critchlow though, cleat. That does look like a Joe he, he seems like you'd wear something like The this. white socks yeah, are already yeah. coming out sock. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the room of Nikes right oh here. Oh my god. Wait, so these are these the ones you picked out there? Actually, no. These are totally You want to see what cleats. we picked? You want to see what we picked? They're in the back corner. We're something way different than all of the cleats. These are ours. Right here. These are the classics. They're not too bulky, but just right for offensive line. You know, they have some toe protection. You can move good in them. Okay. This is where it's at. So do you guys wear these for the games or games you get totally different cleats? We usually wear these in the games. I like to wear cleats I've already worn in. Okay. I, don't, I don't like to wear stiff cleats in the games. So you kind of just wear them until they die out. So if you're like, I kind of need a new pair of cleats, they're like, okay, here you go. Yeah, you just turn in your old cleats, and they're like, what kind do you want, what new ones do you want? And then they give you new ones. Let's go to the gloves. After you, good buddy. This is the only lineman glove that they carry. Nice and padded, white, kind of ugly, but that's, that's what we do. <laughs> So that's the only pair of gloves you guys get? Well, James, I think, uses a different yeah, pair. I like, I like these kind. Okay, what makes these ones special? They're still padded, but they're just a little bit smaller. Okay. These are These are maybe for, like, receivers or defensive backs. You know, lighter, no padding, all grip. He needs to snap the ball, too. I don't need to snap it, so. So yours are just have a lot of padding in them? Padding. Okay, you'll see that, the, like, squishy right there in the palm. Don't forget about the last touch, some deodorant for us stinky guys. They need to give us some, like, really good smelling soap, too, like the Dove, like, girl smelling soap. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you get hit up by people for gear after today? I would give it to, like, my family and stuff, but we get 3XL and we don't really get another <laughs> size. When you're big, it's kind of hard to give it away because you got to find a big person. But... I'm kind of worried, like, if I lose a bunch of weight after I'm done playing, like, 
all those clothes are kind of going to go to waste. <laughs> Don't lose the weight, though. I know. Just keep it Big, on. <laughs> Big is beautiful. Okay, guys. Good luck with fall camp. Thank you. The gear's sweet. Appreciate Thanks it. For Thank you. Your time with us. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Who knew? Deodorant at the end of all of it. They okay. only have one stick? <laughs> I'm just thinking I the same like thing. We're going to need more than we, one can stick. Can we have like a billion of those? Yeah, we're kind of stinky sometimes, <laughs> so yeah. The but only that, thing worse than a football locker room after a hot practice hockey. is a hockey, hockey locker room. Hockey? Oh, my gosh. We used to do the hockey back in the day on BYT. I called a couple of those. It's and just wrong. It is like, like you walk in there, and I, I swear something died, right? It's just... <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. yeah. They need the stuff that they spray in the bowling shoes after you share them with so many other people. Like, they need that for their pads. Oh. Like, when when hockey players are issued equipment, they should receive, like, Febreze and the shoe cleaner stuff and 20 sticks of deodorant. Like, whatever it above. takes. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Hey, next week on Between the Lines, by the way, there was a youth – uh, team from China that came to the BYU baseball camp. Outstanding story. Yeah, so Lauren McLean's uh, going to tell that story. Really cool. How they found out about it, why they came here at so all. So cool. Like, why, Provo, you know? Utah. Awesome. Coming up, Extreme wrote a beautiful song about more than words. Oh. Perhaps they meant emojis. We will explore. Okay. And how do you feel about Ziggy Ansa being expected for week one and ready to go? For who? <laughs> the Seahawks. The Seahawks. This is BYU Sports Nation. Go, baby. Beat your bangles. Between the Lines is presented by Tim Daly Ford and the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you missed last night's season debut of After Further Review, it's on demand on the BYU TV app as the guys broke down every completion of Zach Wilson's from the Potato Bowl. Uh, it aired last night on the BYU TV app and uh, replayed before us earlier this morning. Bienvenidos a BYU Sports Nation with our question of the day. Why is the BYU offense running more plays a game a good or bad idea at Ryan84 Johnson? Answers on Instagram. Did he direct episode eight of Star Wars? I feel that more plays is a good thing because when you have more variety, you keep the defense guessing and make it harder for the other teams to read your plays on film. Variety is what confuses the defense. Yeah, I think it comes well, down well, to coaching and assessing tempos. Two ideas there, right? Just because you're going fast doesn't mean you have variety. Yeah. Obviously, you want versatility in that, okay, if I put Lopini Cato in there, he can block, he can run, and can catch. If I put Matt Bushman in there, hopefully he can block and catch. Right? And when you go fast... Coaches admittedly often run the several same seven or nine plays because you want to go fast. So you just mix it up. Yes. And you have variations off of that that Zach Wilson could signal to a receiver, hey, run a dig instead of a go here or whatever. I've got a question for you. Not our question of the day, but a question. What's the emoji presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event? Ben Bagley, you're feeling the emoji love today. Why don't you join us? Always emoji love. Yes, let's start with this. Eric Mateos' comments on the schedule being too hard, Jeremy. And if you missed them the first time, here they are again. If you don't want this kind of schedule, you don't have a pulse. And you don't really belong in Division I major college football. So this is just what we're about. And this is what we're going to be about. We hope, we wish that we had more Power 5 games. We wish we had 8-9. So hopefully it gets to that soon. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do the uh, big eyes here because, yeah, it's like, oh, really? Eight or nine? Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, listen, I hope that this happens one day, but that BYU's in a league and that they build up within that league. Utah went five and seven two of the first three years in the Pac-12. It took a minute to become the preseason pick to win the league. Uh, BYU's won 40% of its games all time. Every era, uh, Lavelle Edwards, all the good t- – 40%. BYU would be – Five and four or four and five in those situations. Now, I am going to use the fire emoji Mm -hmm. because I think that's a hot take for sure. Oh, it's very hot. I think it's a hot (laughs) take from Eric Mateos. But I will say this. I'm coming around to the idea a little bit more because I think it matters to the younger generation and to the recruits of BYU. Yeah, yeah. Who you're playing, where you're playing. I'm with you. Can everybody see us? That, That matters to them. I'm with you. I'm with you. But the cost is that you won't win as much. So what do you want? Well, if you want to win more, you have to have better players, and I think it's part of recruiting. So can you recruit better players because you have a better schedule? Yes, and then you will lose 40 
you'll win 40%. Let's say you're way better and you win 50%. It's still not a good enough win percentage. And I think that we focus so much on, well, BYU needs to play an easier schedule because they need to have that magical season and get invited to a Power 5 conference. I think it's already, BYU's resume is already out there. I don't, honestly, I don't think that there is. Well, it could get worse if you have bad seasons. I, I'm just, yeah. the 2017 season we hope was a one-off, but I think BYU's resume, resume in large part is that was out there. Yeah, but you can put a nice uh, cherry on top if you have a season that says, yes, we can do this. BYU's yet to win 10 games since 2011. I haven't shown they can be a national anything. Hey, an over 500 record against Power 5 teams, given the BYU schedules, would be, I think, a great goal. Yeah, and a even great that, goal. And even that, if you're playing 8 or 9, you're mediocre. 50%, you're mediocre. Next. What's the emoji of Pete Carroll saying that Ziggy Anza will be ready for week one for the Seahawks? You're the Seahawks fan. You need to go first. Yeah, the uh, the strong arm. Yeah. Are these the Simpsons? Is that is that the they're yellow. Is that the, they're the Simpsons? Like this is like Homer on a diet or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I think Ziggy's going to be uh, hopefully healthy and a really good player for the Seahawks who need to replace Frank Clark. Uh, Jaron Reed's uh, out for the first six games. Both those guys had double digit sacks. Frank Clark went to the Chiefs. So Ziggy is needed. Hard eyes for this. My BYU fandom and my Ziggy love is outweighing my Cincinnati Bengals love in this instance because the Seahawks and Bengals open up against each other in week one. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. Oh, the Seahawks won't have Ziggy, then that's probably good for the Bengals. But to hear that Ziggy is healthy and progressing, that that matters more to me. So I, I love this idea that he's healthy. Just stay healthy. He's had injury concerns his whole career. Get him healthy. Keep him healthy. Hope he can ball out in Seattle. Next. What's the emoji? BYU offering rock passes to Utah Valley students. Oh, I, I love this. Uh, you know, prayers up for this one. I think that... Uh, it was mentioned first time since 07 that this has happened. I'm not sure it's been that long, but wow, this is good because I don't care who's there. There are some students who go to other schools that want to go to what you want to go to Utah for medicine, but you're a BYU fan, like whatever, right? Um, as long as BYU can stuff the rock, I don't care where they're from. I don't care. Does Utah Valley have a football team? Last I checked, they don't. No, they do not. And many Utah Valley fans have grown up loving the BYU Cougars. I go with the heart emoji. Some of my best memories at BYU football games as a fan came with one of my best friends, Jeff Johnson, who was a Utah Valley student, but a diehard BYU football fan. And we got to sit next to each other and watch the games. This is a great thing. Don't we have a blue heart? Could we have used a blue heart? Uh, I don't know. We're three weeks and one day out, right? Stop it. We're not going to. A heart is one of the acceptable things that is allowed to be read, okay? Okay. It's an acceptable red. There is a blue heart. I think this is a great idea. Fill the stands. Let's go 60,000 plus. So credit to BYU Athletic Marketing and Lisa Wilson for getting on this venture together and getting the Utah Valley students back into the student section. If the Rock isn't packed for for four of the six games, at least, the good four, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get upset. I love it. This is as good a home schedule as BYU can put I together. love this. Make great this memories with your Utah Valley roommates, people. Next. Emoji this. NCAA March Madness having the BYU team of the decade as a 13th seed. I'm going to keep it a hundy uh, because in this uh, team, it looks like uh, Kyle Collinsworth, Jim Fredette, Tyler Hawes, Eric Mika, Yoli Childs put on this team. That team would score at least 100. I mean, that, <laughs> I mean that's a really, really good team. Uh, 13 seed, good to make it, be one of the top 64 teams of the decade. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool, but I am going to roll my eyes at this a little bit, Jerem, because now that I think about it, that team as a 13 seed? No, 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 that's not what he's saying per se. He's saying BYU's program is a 13 seed. I know. Okay, but still, roll, roll my eyes at that a little bit. One, I don't, I don't really care. It's cool to be included. I don't really care. But I think that just because you have the national player of the year in there, you probably, as a program, garner higher than a 13 seed. I don't know. I think it should be at least a 12 or an 11. Okay? We're getting real picky. <laughs> I, I am going to get picky in this regard. That's why I'm rolling my eyes. All right. Last one. Emoji this. 
BYU soccer not being ranked in the United States coach or not United Soccer coaches poll. It's probably United States as well, right? Yeah. Um, sure. Uh, I go. Uh, I don't know, guy. I don't. How would you describe this? Uh, I don't know. The shrug. It's the, the shrug, shrug guy. Shrug man. Mm. Who? What superhero will rescue us? Shrug man. Uh, it's he. Be always five out. Whatever. Like, should they be in? Probably. They've won the league, what, four of the last five? They returned nine starters, two around the Herman Watch list. Like, yeah, I think they should have been ranked. Yeah, what team that has two Herman Watch list members isn't ranked? I will not break that down at that <laughs> level. Hand me the bamboo blue goggles, Jerem. Okay. I am going to synchronize with my emoji. Sunglasses. Blue goggle alert. Blue goggle alert. Uh, it's all good. Not so much alert. blue goggles. Blue it's just, goggle it's all alert. good. Like, they're five out, whatever. They'll win on the field. They'll take care of business against Utah. They'll take care of business on the road early in the season. Which one's you? And then I think BYU will handle Texas A&M at home, the team that is ranked in the top 15. Mm. All good. Sunglasses on, baby. It's all good, bun. Yes. Let's it's just chill. Man. Let's just yeah. relax. It's okay. It's okay. BYU will be ranked at some point. It doesn't matter right now. Let's take care of business when the games start. Right. Bachman Turner Overdrive. Taking care of business. And that. And then, and then Bachman's son was Tal, and he did She's So High, and then, yeah, the whole thing. There's that, the story. That ends our emoji segment. I heard Tal Bachman playing when I was bowling the other day. I bowled a 154, by the way. Nice. Yeah, Bros. Yeah, not bad, right? After the break, why the heck the women's soccer team isn't in the coaches' poll? We'll discuss a little more. And why is the BYU offense running more plays a game a good or bad idea? What's the elite voice on that? This is BYU Sports Nation. Take it. This segment of BYU Sports Nation presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Shout out to today's guests, Tyson Williams and the offensive lineman, Brady Christensen and James Empey in between the lines with Lauren McLean. Shows on demand via the podcast and the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Let's whip it! It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Football. Fall camp practice number seven is today. It's also Team Photo Day. We'll be live on the BYU TV Sports Facebook account, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, with interviews and reaction. Soccer. The BYU women, five spots out of the United Soccer Coaches' top 25 preseason poll. BYU returns nine starters, including Herman Trophy watchlist candidates Elise Flake, who scored 14 goals last season, and Michaela Coulihan, second-team All-American. The season opens August 22nd at Alabama. Cougar opponents Texas A&M at Santa Clara ranked 12th and 13th, respectively. Cougars in the minors. In single A, Daniel Schneeman had a double and run in a 5-4 Lake County captain's win over the Dayton Dragons. Schneeman is hitting 295, second highest on the team. Time for today's rise and shoutouts. Jeremy, I'm giving mine to Karan Butler, and I saw this tweet this morning from at NBA Truth Hurts. Said Karan Butler was a drug dealer by the age of 12 and was arrested 15 times even before turning 15. He discovered his love for basketball at a youth detention center. Butler's story is a perfect example on how sports can change someone's life. Now, Karan Butler quoted this tweet and said, the game saved my life. They're making a movie about it. This is outstanding. Yeah, so awesome. shout out to Karan Butler. Mine goes to Colt Mahoney, former Cougar pitcher, now in AAA with the New Orleans Baby Cakes. Yep, that's a real thing. The Marlins affiliate, so perhaps he'll get called up at some point. We'll see. Colton Mahoney started Monday night in Salt Lake in Love front it. of a raucous crowd. He he posted on Instagram a photo. There's got to be like 100 people there. Yeah. That was incredible. Tons of people showed up. Congrats to Colton on the upgrade to Triple A, getting called up. Colton Mahoney, Utah boy. In fact, you know where he went to high school, Jerem? Jordan? Where'd he go? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you, you asked not knowing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up. How about that? Was it Northridge, Jerem? <laughs> oh, did he go to Northridge? I don't know. For some reason, I'm recalling this. Anyway, our question Compelling of the day. television. Our question of the day. <laughs> Why is the BYU offense running more plays, a good idea or a bad idea in each game? At Troy Beagley on Facebook, bad idea to have too many plays. Take a look at last year. If I'm not mistaken, BYU ran fewer plays against Arizona than they did against Cal. BYU beat Arizona. Because our players didn't have to memorize 100 plays. Lost to Cal because the team had to remember and execute too many play designs. It was Northridge. 
It was Northridge High School. Well, congrats. Thank you. Another one. <laughs> the Elite Voice of the Day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Ryben3 on Twitter. More plays could and should mean you're making more progress down the field. More plays isn't great if BYU is not getting first downs or scoring on possessions. But theoretically, more plays should translate into more points, right? Meow. Yeah, exactly. Sorry to Dennis Pitter ran out of time. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter. Use the hashtag BYUSN. Instagram and Facebook, too. It's a Northridge week, baby. For Jerem, I'm Spencer. Shout out to former number 22, Mark Atuaya. See you for BYU fall camp coverage and team photo day this afternoon on the Facebook Live, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Go Cougs.